Hey, hey everyone, welcome to my shop and welcome to the channel. Thank you for following along. Hey, if you guys are enjoying these videos, I encourage you to hit the like and subscribe button and we will continue releasing some fun content. Um, but this week I was kind of getting a little sentimental going through some old hard drives and SD cards, trying to organize some of my files, getting iPhones onto a hard drive. Anyway, and I came across this SD card that had a folder labeled bikes I built and literally had almost all the bikes I had ever ridden or owned or raced um, from when I was a kid into my adulthood. And I thought this might be kind of a cool opportunity to tell my personal story of my cycling journey from uh, when I was just a kid up till now. And I would consider myself an average American cycling enthusiast. I never was a pro racer, but I wasn't just like, you know, had a bike that sat in a garage, but I never rode it. Um, I was an avid rider, loved the sport. Um, obviously, I never was at that super top tier level, but I definitely um, was a huge part of my life. And now today, a giant part of my bike collection are kids' bikes again. And it's kind of funny how things go full circle, and I'm realizing how I am probably at the best part of my cycling phase where I get to witness my kids learning how to bike and grow a love and passion for what I believe is one of the greatest sports and adventure sports out there um, and where they're able to experience freedom and creativity on their bikes to just get out and explore nature and the outdoors. And it's a really empowering thing. And I just love that I'm able to now witness my kids learning how to get into that. And it's pretty cool. So I hope you have some fun as we go back to some hilarious times in uh, the world of cycling through my eyes. So like most of you guys, when you're little kids, you probably have like a little 12 or 16 inch bike. I don't really remember those. So I'm just going to start with the first bike that I really remember. And this is a Magnum uh, Fugitive BMX. And I remember getting this on Christmas from Santa. Um, and I'm sure it was from Target or Walmart or something. But this is the first like real bike. And I remember being obsessed with this. Spraying WD-40 on the tires and keeping this thing just in prime condition and shredding all over my hometown of Castle in North Dakota. It was truly my first bike and I beat the crap out of this thing and it took me everywhere I ever needed to be. Um, but shortly after this bike, I do remember uh, moving into another BMX bike, which was a crazy find at the time. It was an Auburn BMX. This is like a really specialty BMX company. Um, and this bike was for sale at Shields All Sports in Fargo, North Dakota, accidentally priced for $15 at the used bike rack section. And they upheld the price of 15 bucks and let me take it home. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be $150, but either way, I thought I just got a sweet deal. But this bike didn't last long because shortly after this, um, my dad and my uncles had this homemade go-kart that we had as kids, and it was given to my brother and I, but it needed a new motor. And all I could think of to get money to buy a new five-horse to come some motor was to sell this BMX bike. And this was a bittersweet moment, but it brought me to the next stage in my cycling life, which was mountain biking. I got bit by the mountain bike bug pretty early, and I was super stoked when I saved up enough money to buy this Raleigh M80 from Bikes Unlimited in Fargo. Sorry to say they are no longer a store, but I mowed lawns, mowed the church lawns, the lemonade stands, selling cookies, did everything I could. I even sold the motor off of our go-kart that we sadly did wreck in a ditch um, to buy this bike for 549 bucks. And it was the best purchase of my life at the time. And really, I got inspired to buy a mountain bike when my best friend Joey, his dad, like two summers in a row, took us to Lutzen Ski Resort in Minnesota up on the North Shore, um, where they would actually take us up on the ski lifts and then we'd ride down. I don't know if they do that anymore, but it was a super fun trip. And I vividly remember going the first year, it was just me and Joey and his dad. And then the next year, our, our uh, 
friend Brandon came with us and sad to say that he has passed, but it was a memory that I will cherish for many, many years. And I'm so grateful that Mario was actually one of the first guys to kind of inspire me to get into this amazing sport of mountain biking. And on to the next bike. This is a pre-Trek era Klein Adroit. I vividly remember buying this from Shields All Sports in Fargo, and they had it because they were liquidating all of Klein's old frames when Trek bought them out. And I built this bike up piece by piece. Uh, you see I got Thompson cockpit even going there, and that sweet Manitou fork on there was just awesome. But it was really cool, and I really remember how amazing it was to have a bike that was this lightweight, and I thought it just was such a um, like technically awesome bike for technical trails, especially like you see here uh, at one of my first races at Laddie's Loppet in Maple Log, Callaway, Minnesota. Um, they've been putting this race on for decades uh, the Richards family owns a resort. It's a Nordic ski resort, but they have amazing mountain bike trails in the summer and some of the most technical trails in the world. They've even held UCI races here. So it's a really uh, cherished place in my heart and it's only about 45 minutes from my house. So even better, but that bike was just absolutely awesome. Now I rode that climb for a couple seasons in high school and then, um, I must have been maybe 17 when I bought a Salsa a la carte steel hardtail frame. Uh, still a 26-inch bike from Paramount Sports, and they are still around here in Fargo, uh, but built that bike up with a SID fork, and that was the initial uh, bike that I ever rode a SID fork on, and I've had a SID fork on every bike that I've ever owned from that point on almost. And it was pretty fun. I remember to go into several races with this thing. I took this thing to college when I went up to the University of Minnesota Duluth. So it's really where um, I kind of got into serious racing was actually on this steel hardtail, which is kind of funny to say. And there I am again, Laddie's Loppet. There's Jay actually right behind me. Uh, Jay Richards, guy who owns the place uh, on the lakeside drops there and just having a blast Really, this course was built for 26-inch bikes. Obviously, nobody rides those anymore, but I would love to ride some 26ers over at Maple Log any day. Uh, so, uh, But hey, let's check out this next bike, and this was a short-lived one, a uh, Klein Attitude Race. I honestly don't even remember where I found this frame, maybe on eBay, uh, but I built it up, used a lot of parts from that salsa a la carte, I kept that Sid fork, and uh, thought that I you know, would have a blast on this bike. And I don't really even remember what happened to it. I must have just gotten bored with it uh, because I only remember riding it for maybe one season, if that. Um, and the part that was challenging to me, it had these weird old school hydraulic brake mounts that you had to get this adapter. So that was kind of finicky. And um, I think the frame was a little too small for me. So... That may have been why I didn't ride it that long, but needless to say, it is an awesome frame. Uh, super light, super agile, just super fun. If you guys were ever into those 26-inch bikes, especially those really lightweight Klein frames or maybe those Cannondale frames from the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, just super fun bikes, had really unique paint jobs, and I had a blast riding them, especially when I lived in Duluth in college where you had just super technical trails where it actually was kind of fun riding a 26 inch bike. Um, but <sighs> moving on. <laughs> so we're moving into another era of my cycling life. And this is when I first got into road biking and this was a super simple bike. I remember buying this gosh, must've been from, I don't even know, somewhere online like Jensen USA or bike Nash bar or something. Um, but I got this bike full 105 group set. And I, I remember paying like 700 bucks for this road bike, which, you know, at the time seemed like a good deal. I don't know how much a 105 group set road bike is now, but it's probably not like five or 700 bucks. Uh, but this is where I learned how to road bike. And I took this on my first ever Wednesday night group rides in Duluth. And that was a mind blowing experience. Cause that's where I learned what bonking was. Uh, they would go every Wednesday, 50 to 70 mile ride. And it was a pretty hard effort, lots of climbing. 
and it's where I really learned how to put in hard efforts. I had no idea what I was missing until this point on this KHS road bike. And because I like to keep brands cohesive, I guess I bought a KHS mountain bike. Uh, this one I built up with the KHS A light frame. This is a hardtail 26er frame again, and I just moved a ton of the parts over from that Klein Attitude race. Um, I was very much into my SRAM components back then. As you can see, the Truvative Stylo three by crank set that I actually made into a two by, very cutting edge at the time. Um, still rocking the XO derailleur and this grip shifters, and I still to this day run. <laughs> grip shifts and maybe i'm a weirdo but i'm just really vibing on the grip shifts maybe they'll come back again maybe not i don't know um, but i did race on this bike in the minnesota series and did some collegiate biking on it it was a fun little bike i do remember enjoying this one but i don't know what happened to it probably sold it on ebay now, next up is this Cannondale Caffeine, still a 26-inch bike. I remember just buying this one stock uh, from the bike shop in Duluth. And the thing about this that I remember is that it was the bike that I rode when I felt super fit. This was after a year or two riding those group rides with the road, road bike group rides, and I just felt super fit. I was racing Cat 2, which, you know... Um, wasn't the top level at the time, but I was like on the podium in Cat 2 races, and it felt just great on this bike. The lefty took a little getting used to, but I do remember really loving that bike. Uh, don't know where it went. Probably sold it on eBay and saved my money to buy my next bike. And it kind of pains me to say this, but a lot of these bikes I bought in my college years, I do remember buying a lot of them with... Uh, student loan money which i'm you know still paying today so technically none of these bikes ever got paid off um <laughs> but here is uh an orbea i think it was an orbea onyx road bike i just bought this one stock from like the ski hut in duluth and it was my first carbon bike ever i did do some collegiate races on it road races on it super fun bike it's kind of fun to ride just a super lightweight road bike i think i only had it for about one season though now this next one i can say was probably the most proud i've ever been of a bike build and i can definitely say this was like one of my favorite bikes I ever had ridden. People made fun of me. But yeah, this is a Kinesis Max Light XC Pro 2. It's still a 26-inch bike, but I just felt so proud. First time with Stan's wheels on it. First time riding tubeless. And it's where I kind of learned how to get a bike set up super light. And as you can see, red um, bib number there. And that means I was racing Cat 1 at the time. So this is uh, like my first season cat one on this bike and it was awesome i just love this bike honestly if i could find this frame again i would love to build this bike up for like one of my kids as maybe their first mountain bike but it was pretty cool it had that integrated carbon uh rear um and just awesome bike i don't even know where i got all the white aluminum components but <laughs> pretty sweet uh, and as you can say, UK design. So I think Kinesis is like a out of the UK, but they're manufactured in Taiwan. And here you can see riding with my bro. Um, but it was a super fun bike and I miss it indeed. But on to the next. And this next one, it's kind of part of a sad story. Um, I had sold that Kinesis and I kind of bought this bike just to have as like a training bike. Uh, it was just like a red line, super rigid bike. I got it super cheap. Um, and I used it to ride in the winter, but it was actually when I started one of my first businesses, I like build platform beds. And I remember that's kind of when I stopped racing. This was probably around 2010. I was not racing and I just had this bike as kind of a bump around bike when I had time to get out on the trails. But thinking about this time kind of makes me a little sad because it was when I stopped racing. I do remember not biking much at the time you know starting this new venture and I was so distracted putting all my energy into that venture that I didn't have time to ride and I think it was almost two years until I finally got back into cycling 
uh, through some mental struggles and moving back home to North Dakota. And when I did that, uh, my I bought a new bike from, I think, Continental Ski and Bike in Duluth. And I honestly do not remember this bike barely at all, except for the fact that it did not fit me. It was a large in a Cannondale, and I don't know why, I just felt super stretched out. And I think I did like two races on it in 2012, but it was my first time back racing. I was, after almost two years, I was not in good fitness, and I remember just bonking hard, and I was probably so out of shape that I blamed that on this bike when it was really just my fitness. Um, but I don't remember riding this thing much. It I literally probably owned it for a few months before I sold it. And I moved down into a smaller frame size in one of my favorite bikes I have ever owned. And that is this beauty right here, a giant XTC 29er. Uh, this was an alloy frame, but just an amazing bike. And I have a lot of memories on this thing. But you know, one of the things that it also reminds me is that I think that I actually had a lot of bikes in between some of these bikes that I'm showing you guys that were just like really short term, like what I call winter bikes. I used to buy like bikes just to ride in the off season that I could kind of beat around. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of photos of those because those were like cheaper ones. But let's get back to this thing. So this giant XTC 29er, it was my first 29er that I like rode a lot on. And it was just so much fun. And it's when I, I had really good fitness. Um, this was 2012 going into 2013. And I kind of had discovered endurance riding, like doing more marathon races, doing 50 to 100 milers. Um, and I had the chance to race in my very first 100 mile mountain bike race. And it was the Mata Hay 100. Um, here you see me uh, cruising in the Badlands in North Dakota. And it was a life-changing experience, I have to say. It was the first year they did the Mata Hay 100, and I had a blast. Um, my dad was there to support me. Uh, it was just a really cool experience. I literally remember, like, hallucinating during that race. Uh, it was just crazy, like, a little under 12 hours to finish that thing, uh, 15,000 vertical feet of climbing. And I think it kind of inspired me to see how far I could push my cycling fitness. And after 2012, you know, this was my first year back into it after a couple of years. And now um, I had a full year under my belt and I'm like, hey, 2013, let's go all out. And I really wanted to commit to seeing how fast I could get that year. And it also led me to think about, okay, well, what kind of equipment am I going to get? And it was the first year I actively searched for a sponsor. And this bike here is a Grammo. Uh, Toa 29er. It was a little company out of like Oregon for a short period of time. They tried to do these bikes. I think they're getting the frames from Taiwan or China. And I got hooked up with this bike for like next to nothing. And the cool thing was it was the first year of Sharam XX1. And you can see there I got the 1x11 drivetrain. It was really an amazing bike. And I went to some really cool races on this thing that year. It was just an awesome year. Uh, the sad part is that 2013 was also my last cycling season uh, until, you know, I started back up almost 11 years later. Um, but it was, it kind of came to a sad end. I finished the season doing the Lutzen 99er and I dropped out halfway trying to stay with the lead pack and bonked, dropped out, and then did the Mata Hay for the second time. I tried to get a sub 10 hour time and it ended up dropping out at mile 80. And I just was having some really you know, hard mental struggles because I was also starting my business at that same time. And I was a super overwhelmed trying to start this business and trying to ride bike. And you guys kind of know like how hard it is to balance life, but that was a really hard time for me. And now 10, 11 years later, I'm like, well, I want to get back in, into it for the right reasons. Um, just because of the pure passion of the sport, being able to get outdoors. And that's why today, um, I'm really focused on just having a good time and getting out there for the right reasons and not getting burnt out and really being aware of that. So for the most part, I almost went 10 years without actively cycling, but there's a few times got out, just have a fun time, like hanging out with my brother, going to find wild hemp out in the grasslands. Um, and I went through a spurt of actually building a ton of bikes and repairing bikes from pawn shops and selling them on eBay or on Facebook or Craigslist. 
Um, it was kind of just a way to kill the time and still be involved in the hobby, even though I wasn't really actively cycling. So these are like one of many. I mean, I probably bought and sold 20 or 30 different bikes during this time where I would just flip them basically and sell them on, on Craigslist for a profit. Um, but there's many, many more. Obviously, there's just kind of a handful of these. I wouldn't consider them my bikes because I didn't really ride them. Um, but fast forward 10 years later, I got the opportunity to sell my business and step away. And one of the number one ways for me to kind of um, mentally get through that time is to start cycling again. So I bought a road bike here in All City, Zigzag, and had a awesome time building up a new hardtail mountain bike. And this one is a specialized chisel frame, built it up with, you know, really nice roval wheels and cockpit and some richie parts and then i kept the one by 11 xx drivetrain just to kick it old school um, but i'm really excited to get on this bike and do some marathon races this year super stoked um, and then just recently last week i found this gem of a gravel bike it's an aluminum bmc unrestricted gravel bike full grx group set and it is just a blast. And I got it for like 1200 bucks. It was literally half off online. Just a crazy steal. And I'm really excited to put on some awesome miles. And many more bikes will come and go as our interests in the sport evolve. And that's okay. And I think the coolest part that I personally am in right now is the fact that I now get to share my love of this sport with my kids and see them learn how to pedal for the first time, learn how to ride without training wheels for the first time, and it's awesome that I can now do this together as a family and share my passion for the sport with them. And I can't just wait to see where they take their journey um, and see them shredding around the yard. It's awesome how it goes full circle, and it's pretty fun. Well, there you have it. You guys made it all the way through my personal cycling journey and all the bikes I've owned for the most part. There's still much more to come, and I am excited to be able to share all these videos with you guys. If you enjoyed this one, I encourage you to give me a like and subscribe, and we will be seeing you guys next time. And hey, I'd love to hear some of the bikes you have ridden over the years down in the comments. We can continue that conversation later. Have a great one, and we will see you next time.